Once the network analyzer has been calibrated with the appropriate connector set, whether it be GR, SMA, Type-in or APC7, Precision 7, the end of the cable becomes the measurement phase reference for the network analyzer. So we need to add a similar connector to what we calibrated the connector with, so GR to GR, N to N, in order to maintain that phase reference. Now this is a very important concept for precision measurements, but we will do the best we can with the uh, equipment we have. The various loads we will be testing will be resistors with short or long leads, capacitors and inductors with or without long leads. Actually the inductors generally have only one lead length so we'll just stick with the short leads for the inductor. Place the component under test inductor capacitor resistor on the end of the connector that was calibrated on the port as 1-1 port is typical. When you look at the display decide the frequency points of interest. For example, in the resistor display shown, we have a 5 ohm resistor with short leads. As the display shows, the ref low frequency indicates a 4.6 ohm resistor with 16 or a small value of milliohms of inductance. At 1 gigahertz, the unit is displaying 18 ohms of resistance and 190 ohms of reactance which is equivalent to 17 nano henrys at 1 gigahertz. But there are some other useful points that can be shown in this case. In particular the point at which we cross the J equals 1 line is always a useful indicator. Not that there is anything special about J equals 1 ohm or J equals 50 ohm in the denormalized system, but it's a point we recognize. Another important point is probably something in the low megahertz, which is before the capacitive effects start to take place. This is where you can determine your equivalent uh, inductance added with the resistor. We will add these points as markers 2, 3, and another marker 4 just to give us a frequency spread. By selecting each marker in succession, you can read off the specifics of the device, ohms, reactive ohms, and equivalent L or C at the top of the screen. Record this data in a spreadsheet so you can do calculations on the equivalent inductance and capacitance. A copy or a plot of the data can be accomplished by simply pushing copy under the instrument tape state section of the network analyzer and plot using the plot soft key. Changing the resistor to have longer leads, simply extending them on the connector, you will see very significant changes in the resistance for some frequency, resistance, and inductance. And you will need to adjust your markers, as you see on the, on the screen as shown. The added inductance is readily apparent above several hundred megahertz. A unique point will be the point at which the resistance moves directly opposite to the other side of the chart which is the self-resonant frequency with the inductance and capacitance of the resistor. For the inductor, short versus long lead links is not a significant difference since we're adding inductance, but you will still see various effects associated with the length frequency changes and the self-resonant frequency will also be an important point to record data from.
For the capacitor, we will have a display similar to the inductor, only the inverse. The capacitor starts out as a high impedance at low frequencies, the right side of the smart chart, and then continues clockwise to the low impedance part of the Smith chart, the left hand side. Again, the self resonant frequency where the capacitor becomes inductive is an important point used in design and frequency limitation for devices. Collect the data for the capacitor as you would the inductor and the other components and record them in your spreadsheet for analysis.